we're going to be drawing the desert hairy scorpion. Now all scorpions are hairy. This one must be exceptionally hairy and it lives in the deserts of the American Southwest, the Sonoran Desert, out in uh, Arizona, New Mexico. Now you'll see that I've given you quite a few little starter dots. Should be about 10 on the page. We're going to start with these two dots over here. This one and this one. So locate those. They're kind of above and below this writing here that says scorpions have a pocket inside their mouth. Here, up and down. And then they are going to kind of form a triangle with this dot over here. So locate this dot. Imagine that there's a triangle. Don't draw the triangle, just you can find the dots by seeing it's kind of like finding a constellation in the sky. This is a triangle. Okay, so we're going to be drawing kind of a backwards letter C from this dot down here around through this dot and down here. Now these are just going to be guidelines. You're going to be racing these so don't make them too heavy. Keep them light. And then next we're going to put in what's going to become the body. We're going to use this dot again and we're going to be headed out to right here. So we want to make a kind of go up and over like this, make a little curve like this. We kind of, the front of his head's going to be sort of flat right here, make kind of a flat place. And then up and over and then To actually kind of go down a little bit, make kind of a smooth curve like that. And then from this dot again you go down a little bit, make a curve like this. And then you're going to want to bring your curve all the way through this dot right here. Like this. And then about one third of the way up right here I'm going to make a line right along here. And then make a more shallow curve like this. Right like that. Now I think we're going to go ahead and sketch out our parts in here before we go on and do some more guidelines. Down here Right before the dot, you want to make kind of a grape-sized oval. Just imagine a green grape sitting there, like that. And make another one up here, only make this one a little smaller. Maybe this one is an olive. Just a little smaller because, because this claw is going to be a little bit further from us. It's more in the distance. It's going to be just a little bit smaller. I've got a big green grape and then an olive. And then you're going to have one, two, three more things here. You're going to have kind of a an oval here. And then we're going to have a smaller oval right here. And then we're going to have a kind of a wiggly thing that kind of goes over like this. And then back here, same thing, we're going to have an oval here, here, oops, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, and then something goes like that.
and then off the end of here, let me see if I zoom in a little bit more. This is where you're going to have a big pointy thing sticking off like that. And then one down here, this is going to remind you a lot of a lobster claw. And then up here, same thing. I'm sticking off, it kind of goes straight off the end here like this. Like that. that. Now we'll go over here and we'll kind of block in the legs a little bit. We'll come back and finish that detail in a little bit. Let's get these guidelines sketched in. What we want to do first is right in this space here, we want to put in four little kind of cone things. This thing is the cephalothorax. So you know in an insect you have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. You have three body parts. Well, in an arachnid, which the scorpion is, like a spider, you have two body parts. So which one's missing? Well, the head and the thorax kind of get all crunched together. So we call this the cephalothorax, which means head and thorax combined. And then this would be the abdomen back here. So the cephalothorax is going to have the eyes and the legs coming off of it. So this is where the legs are going to come off. You're going to kind of make a little thing here. You're going to make four of them. A little thing here. And a little thing here. I'm going to lean this one out a little bit. It's like a little, kind of like a little cup-shaped thing leaning out like that. And then the last one kind of, we're not going to see it very well, kind of goes out over there. And then we're going to use these three dots as the end point of our legs. So from this first thing, these are called the coxa. What we've drawn are the coxa. And it's kind of like maybe the shoulder socket or something or hip socket. So we're going to make our guideline come out of here and then turn to the right a little bit, come down. It's kind of like maybe an S, kind of a wiggly thing like that, down to here, something like that. And this is the guideline. And then same thing here, kind of go down and out and down and then back down. It's one, two, three, four, kind of five segments. One, Kind of like that. And then the third one is going to do something a little different. We're going to end up down here, but we're going to go by way of this dot. Remember this dot here that we used to draw the bottom of the abdomen? We're going to, oddly enough, go up to that first, like this. Make a curve kind of going up like that and then go down over like this and come back like that. That seems kind of strange, but there we go. And then the fourth leg on this side, see how close we are to the edge? There's the edge. The fourth leg can end up somewhere over here kind of above these words, something like this. I didn't give you a dot. You can kind of just estimate over here. What we want to do is come from this fourth one, kind of come under here like this, up, over, down, and over, something like that. Just kind of, something like that. And then, of course, you know, arachnids have eight legs, not just four. The other ones are going to be behind here. We're not really going to see them very well, 
So we can just make kind of guidelines like this. We're just going to barely even see well, like that kind of sticking out. Kind of like hooks. We're not going to see them well. And then we have the last guideline would be for what most people call the tail. And I bet even the experts call it the tail sometimes. But technically it's not a tail, it's called a metasoma. And so we want to start right from the middle of this thing. And we're going to head for this dot. You see we've got two remaining dots. We want to make a big loop up and around through them like that. So now we're ready to go back and start filling things in. Let's start back here and we'll just work our way through from left to right again and this time finish it up. So now we can erase our guideline and we'll just we'll perfect these shapes just a little bit more. I'll show you the picture that I was working from. Let me just show you. This is a picture. Basically, I changed a couple of things, but that's basically the one that we're working from. And actually, you can find this picture if you just go to Google, put in scorpions, and then hit images, and you look for this one, you'll, you'll find it probably right near the top. So that's what I'm working from. If it helps you, you can go print it out or look at it while you're working. So let's see. What we need on these these pincers is we need little tiny serrations like that I'm just it's kind of like making waves on the ocean kind of going up like that so it's got these these little like they call serrations like a knife or needle like things like that now this is the movable claw this is the unmovable one so this top piece this would have some also This is all one piece with this, like that. So this is the one that goes on the bottom, up and down. It's like your lower jaw. And then this segment. It goes like that. Now we don't want it to look like beads on a string. We want this to look like segments of an arthropod. So kind of go like that. This one actually curves a little. It's actually a, li a little more L-shaped. And then we have this thing that connects right down here. That's the little connecting piece. And this thing is called the, the Kila. C-H-E-L-A. And actually you've called these the fingers. This is the fixed finger and the movable finger. And this thing right here, this is the patella, P-A-T-E-L-L-A. And in humans, the patella is the kneecap. So we use the same name that we use for kneecap. And then if you want to shade a little bit, I'm going to imagine that the sun is coming straight down. But if you'd like to, another thing you can do at the end is um, you could go over this with pen if you wanted to and then do like some watercolor wash if you want to kind of color it yellowish or something you could always uh, if you go over it in pen you could do a wash drawing okay and then we'll finish up the bottom one same thing 
And of course the, the different species of scorpion, they're going to have a little bit different shape to their pincers. This is the fixed one, so like that. It's the movable one. So you don't have to worry getting it perfect because what you draw will probably be right for some species. Some of them have this part looking very, very large. And some of them are very tiny, like here's a really deadly scorpion, right? And he's got tiny, skinny little pincers. And here's a black one. It's got kind of larger ones. So all kind of different shapes. And I'll just shave a little bit like that. And we'll give a little bit of into that one. Yeah. And then one thing we're going to have to remember to add as we go along too is hairs. After all, it's the desert hairy. They all have hairs. This one just has more everywhere. It's covered with hairs. And this is how they, they sense their environment. They have really very poor eyesight. Their eyes are great at telling light from dark and seeing motion, but that's about it. I think I'll go up here, put some hairs on. So I don't forget. So then down here, this would also be called the same thing. That would be the patella. And then the next one, this is called, this is called the femur. And you may recognize that. That's what we call our thigh bone. F-E-M-U-R. Now let's add something right here on the front of the cephalothorax. It has these little things called chalicerae. And they're little mouth parts that they, it looks like another set of pinchers here. Like there's two that go like this. So it's got like, like that. And there they are. See how there's like two pinchers there and there. But when we draw it, we're not going to be able to see that much detail. We're just going to be able to see kind of like something like that if you make two little like triangles or curvy things like that. That's about all we're going to see. And they are called the Chalicera C-H-E-L-I C-E-R-A-E -E, Chalicera So this is be plural this one and this one. Point to them. So these are its eating fingers. And then also on the, the front part of the cephalothorax, we have eyes. We're going to give ours one, two, three here. And then it has another one up here on this side and I guess we'd be able to see I guess on that we may not be able to see on the other side it'd be kind of the eyes might be on the kind of kind of curving over there but it's got three here three here and two on the top and it's got eight eyes and it still can't see very well but these are mainly for sensing light and dark and then I'm going to give the Cephalothorax, just a little bit of shading, show that it's it's kind of flat-ish on top. Well, it's it's sort of sort of round, but kind of in a flat way. And then it often has some kind of a pattern on here. Now, you may want to not 
add a texture. I don't know, you don't have to add this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of, to make my pencil go a little scruffly texture like that. I don't want to make it look like it's in shadow or anything. I just want it to make it look like it's a pattern. Okay, so we can even label that and go up here. This is the cephalothorax. Now let's go over here. And actually, um, yeah, okay, let's finish this part of the abdomen. And then we're going to have some legs that are kind of lapping over. So we'll have to do a leg and then draw the abdomen behind. But let's make some segments here. We're going to have seven segments along here. We're going to have a couple skinny ones. So there's our first one, two, and they get a little wider, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, so I'm not counting my lines. If you look and count the segments, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the seventh segment is the one that the the tail or the metasoma comes off of. So now we can make these look very realistic if we just erase this guideline just a tiny bit and then every time you have one of these things it starts out back a little bit it kind of goes it goes out. I'll show you what I mean. It kind of this one laps up and over up and over it'll be easier to see on the larger ones kind of like this you see how it kind of and the next one starts under that one sort of like that and then on the bottom kind of like that although this one is kind of this guy I'm looking at the photo here it's Of just put like a wiggle like that. And then let's get the legs put in and we'll go back. We'll pick this up in a minute. Let's put the leg on top of it here. So we'll do we'll do this leg first. We'll do the third leg right here. This dot is right where we're gonna have a joint between kind of a leg segment coming down here. And this is actually also going to be called the patella. So it kind of goes out a little bit like this. Kind of swells out a little bit like that and then goes down like this we have another segment right here this is actually going to be the tibia your lower leg bones the tibia can label this well actually maybe I'll wait no I think I might put something in there maybe off to this side and then down here we've got another one like that and then another segment last little tiny one right here so this tiny last one is called the tarsus t-a-r-s-u-s And it's got two little hooks, little claws at the end. The tarsal claws. And that's very common in insects and spiders also. And then this thing right here, this section is called the basal tarsus. B-A-S-I-L. 
tar sus. So the top one here goes over. You're going to have that little coxa thing. You're going to have, there's the coxa, find that third coxa. And then you're going to have another little thing coming out. A little, little cone shaped thing like that. And then you're going to have one connecting them like that. So when you're done, it's going to look like this. Now you can erase those guidelines. So all in all, this leg's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven segments. This is the femur. That long one, it's it's the longest, I think, which of course it's the longest bone in our body also. And this one right here is called the trochanter, T-R-O, and it looks like chanter, C-H-A-N-T-E-R. And that's a part that you find in, like most bugs of any kind, insects, arachnids. And then that one back there is called the coxa, C-O-X-A. That first one is the coxa. All right, so we're not going to label all the legs, that's it. We're not gonna label the other ones because they're all gonna have the same parts. Okay, so this one, now you already know, here we're going to have a little part here, a little part here, part going over to here, that would be the femur, come down here, the patella actually kind of, it looks, it looks a little more curvy than the others for some reason. There's, that's the patella. We have this down here and then the claws. And then same thing here. Same kind of arrangement. Now this is going to be right in here. The femur is going to be really short because we're kind of seeing it in perspective. It's kind of kind of odd, but you have those two little segments, and then this one, the femur is actually going to look kind of short because it's just the way we're looking at it. And then we'll fill in this one behind here, back out a little bit. So you're not going to be able to see this part here. You're kind of going to see it sticking out a little bit. So right here, this would be the the, um, the patella would go right in here. I think that would be the tibia. Make sure I got that right. I'm looking at this leg here. So we got this little thing. That's the tarsus. Two, three, four. It looks like it's a joint in there. And we've got really long femur that goes behind there. We kind of just can't see right there. Now I'm just going to shade just a little bit on either side of mine like that. ones right under the body there be a little bit darker now you you don't 
really see these in a lot of photographs and drawings. I kind of pulled the coxa out a little bit, but oftentimes they're really tucked under on the underside there. You can't really even see them. And then as far as the legs on the other side, um, you see how you just can hardly see, you know, they're just kind of disappearing like that. You can just kind of just make a suggestion, just kind of sketch in like this. You don't even have to have them be very well drawn because they're in the background. We're just not going to see them very much. Don't draw attention to them. That's the trick. Don't draw attention to them. There. Just keep them kind of sketchy. Now we can do this abdomen thingy behind here. We can continue these, kind of have like a line going down here. And then we can shade this to make it look round. Like it's going under. Now, inside of the abdomen, here we're going to find the breathing apparatus, the book lungs. The scorpion is very much like a spider on the inside. So I put a note down here at the bottom. Scorpions breathe like spiders do with book lungs and air holes called spiracles. So if you wanted to, you could add a couple little holes. Now they wouldn't be this big, but if we made them tiny, you wouldn't see them. These are spiracles, S-P-I-R-A-C-L-E-S. And then they would lead to this little book lung thing, and they call it a book lung because it looks like it has a lot of pages, like a book. So if you laid out all the pages of a book, it would cover a very wide area. So same thing, the lungs have all these like pages, and that gives it a lot of surface area, and every page can touch the air, can, can get oxygen from the air, and so that gives the book lungs a lot of surface area. Uh, so it can absorb oxygen. Okay. Kind of darken up. Okay, so let's finish the metasoma here. That's the part that people are most interested in usually. So our guideline is going to go in the middle of these segments. Let's add this first. Right here at the end, we're going to put put a circle kind of like right like this. Guideline. That's going to help us to have a circle there. And then uh, maybe we should just go ahead and draw this first. We're going to have um, a segment here. Let's see, total one, two, a total of six areas. So this is one, two, three, four. I'm just kind of blocking them in with five, six. This. So I think I might want to change this one to here, Maybe this one to here. See, I'm still sketching. That one goes up to up here. Maybe I'll want to make that middle of this one a little bit bigger. Something like that. Okay, let me show you a picture of the tail. This is uh, a different one. This isn't the one we're working from. That's that one. So ours is going to look maybe more like that. Do a nice close-up, nice thick fat tail there. And of course the stinger will go off the end. There's a hole right here we're going to draw. That's actually the anal opening. So like every, every animal has to poop, right? Well, that's where it comes out in a scorpion, right there. So I think I'll start down here at the bottom. This draw up like that. And then, of course, we'll erase that middle line. We're done. 
the segments almost look kind of like roundish like especially this one up here that looked really round more flat on top but kind of really round on the bottom like that like that And then it just keeps going kind of right around. Just bring that curve right around like this. Like that. Okay, and then I'm done with the guideline. You can bring that in if you want to connect that dot. So you don't see that dot there. And then I'm going to do some shading. I'm going to... Imagine that the sun is coming down from above, so this side will be shadowed. Maybe some down here like that. And then this side, so if the sun is coming down, it would then you have to switch over and shade this side. Just imagine that that sun is coming down. And then on this one, it would be the underside. And then the all-important stinger is actually going to go this direction, like this. It's going to curve back towards the head. Now these desert hairy scorpions are not the most venomous of all scorpions. In fact, people that have been stung by these say it's like getting a bee sting. It's really, unless you're allergic to it, it's really not that life-threatening just by getting stung by a wasp or a bee. So in this space right here, if you want to kind of add a background to your picture, you don't have to do this, but if you kind of wanted to put him in a landscape, you could draw some kind of rocks and things and you could give them a burrow back here. And I'll show you a picture of a real scorpion burrow. Let's hold it close. There's a burrow. And here's a scorpion hiding in its burrow. And here is somebody that filled the burrow with, I don't know, either metal or wax poured hot stuff down there, let it cool, and then dug it out. So that's the shape of the burrow. It's kind of like a corkscrew spiral thing going down. And here's some drawings of burrow shapes. So it seems they have kind of a place at the top. They have like a resting place where they can hide. This would be it right here. This is where they spend a lot of time waiting for prey. And then when they want to really go down deep during the day, they go down here. So at night they lurk towards the top, and in the daytime they go to the bottom to stay cool. So I'll show you this picture again. So that would be a nice one to think of. Kind of draw a dark area. And then as you go down, get a little bit lighter. And then you can, even if you just make these like C shapes or something, you can put some rocks around it. Add some texture there. Here's some rocks down here. Kind of go like that. You can experiment with what texture works best. You might have a little bit of shading right here at the top. So this would be where it's really, really dark on the inside. And then you'd have kind of a little bit of shadowy area. It's like a lip at the top that would be kind of a little bit shady like that. See how it looks like it's going under now? Yeah, just a little shadow there at the top. more. See this is my cheatsy way. I just go, I just make a bunch of letter C's real quick like this. It kind of looks like shaded rocks. Just 
doesn't matter how fast you can make letter C's. Sorry about that. I was just shading right here, like this, up and under. It kind of makes it look like it's kind of like curving in and under. You see right here in this picture, so there's a little bit of shadow right there. That's what I tried to do. Again, just make. So you can spend as little or as much time on that as you want to. Give that a little tan color if you'd like. And then we have the note right here about the burrow. So this can be kind of at the top of a tiny little hillside here. And then maybe there's a few darker rocks. It's actually easier to do this texture for painting. You have different colors to smudge around. Doing it in pencils, kind of a little bit challenging. But even that gives you the idea. So let me just make sure that you've read all the notes on here. This one over here says that scorpions have a pocket inside their mouth where they store food while they chew. They swallow the liquid and spit out the solid parts. So I found the best thing I could find diagram is this. It's kind of blurry. It's not exactly the best, but let's see if we can see this. I'm thinking that maybe the pocket that I read about, maybe this pharynx here that they're talking about right here. So they take their little, their little Clothsura parts, their little fingers there, and they shred and chop and chew and push it into here. And there's a lot of digestion that takes place here. A lot of, it's like salivary glands times 10. And so it's got some digestion in here. And then look at this tiny tube, this little esophagus, this teeny tiny tube. It's like an ant. You know, ants can't actually eat. All they can do is swallow liquid. And so the scorpion is the same. The only thing that can pass through this teeny tiny tube is liquid and so it's like if you like chewed and sucked on an orange swallowed all the juice just sucked the juice out and swallowed it and then spit all the peel and the rind and the pulp out so that's a lot like what the scorpion does so it goes through here so this yellow is its digestive tract all the way up and around oops we forgot to mark on our drawing if you want to right up here forgot to put this on there's a hole right there if you want to mark that's where the stuff comes out a-N-U-S. That's the correct name for that hole. So that's where it poops. I forgot that. And so this is what they call the brain right here. And, and this red thing all along here is the equivalent to the heart. So it doesn't have a heart like ours. It's this really long muscular tube basically. And with this vessel stretching down but it actually does have some kind of a circulatory system the insects mainly don't even have this they their kind of blood just sloshes around it's not really blood red blood like we have either but uh, then the green stuff here this is the genital system and so the reproductive tracts are down here and I gave you a note right over here that says scorpions are famous for their mating ritual it's very amusing for biologists to sit and watch because they have this intricate dance that they do almost for a whole day 
they call it the promenade de. I mean, the biologists even have a name for this dance. And they, they do things with their tails, they touch, they like, it's like they're, they join hands and make circles going around, and it just looks like they're doing a dance. And so what the male is doing then is trying to find, at the same time they're dancing, he's kind of like feeling the ground, out, and he's trying to find a nice smooth place where he can set down his little packet of sperm. So he's got this little thing, and he basically is just going to give it to the female. He's going to set the packet down on the ground, set it there, and then then lead the female right over and go, there it is, there it is, you feel it? There it is, pick it up. And she's like, oh, oh, look at that, it's a packet of sperm. And she picks it up and tucks it in on the underside. There's a little opening on the underside and she can use her feet to tuck it in the underside and then the uh, the sperm fertilizes the eggs and interestingly enough baby scorpions are born alive the mother will have live young and the live young will ride on her back little tiny scorpions will ride on her back for several weeks they're white when they're born and here's a picture of baby scorpions riding on the mother's back see these are all the little babies they're clear don't have much pigment in them. Isn't that adorable? And they just ride around their back until they're a couple weeks old. And one more thing that might interest you. If you live in an area that doesn't have scorpions and you think it's a shame that you don't have them and you'd like to catch one, you might find a pseudoscorpion. So I live in the state of Pennsylvania and I actually found one of these in my mulch pile. So it's not a real scorpion. Can you see what's missing? It's missing the metasoma, or the tail, right? So you know it's not a real scorpion because it doesn't have the tail. But otherwise, it looks very much like one. And so it's its own branch of arthropod. It's not a scorpion. It's not a spider. It's not anything else. It's a pseudoscorpion. There's nothing really like it. So you can add some more texture, detail, or color, anything you want to your drawing. And you can also pause the video and finish up if you need to.